Hey guys, welcome back. I hope that everyone had a great weekend. I hope that everyone was able to finish as much as they possibly could on their pattern project. If you're still working on that, that's awesome. Um, but for those of you guys that are still, that are done, that are ready to move on to the next thing, we're gonna go ahead and start that this week. So this week we're gonna be talking about Roy Lichtenstein. So Roy Lichtenstein was a pop artist in the 1960s and I'm going to show you guys a video here in just a second that explains everything that you need to know about Roy Lichtenstein and then after this video is over we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So let's go ahead and watch that video now. Whimsical paintings based on cartoons, witty sculptures, prints that remind us of famous paintings with a commercial twist. Images so familiar to us today, it's nearly impossible to believe they were once considered quite shocking. So shocking that in 1964, Life Magazine wondered if the artist who created them, Roy Lichtenstein, was quite possibly the worst artist in the U.S. That's not a question anymore. The 1964 Lichtenstein had $30 million, $31 million. This is Christie's auction house in November. When the dust settled, one of Lichtenstein's pieces named, oh, all right, did more than all right. It sold for nearly $43 million. $43 million, a record. Lichtenstein himself would find that shocking. He used to say he was amazed that people would actually pay for what he called uh, used canvas. So. <laughs> My mother calls this her giant chia pet. <laughs> <laughs> and this? Uh, this is a sculpture, brushstroke sculpture. In fact, Roy Lichtenstein may be more popular today than ever, says his youngest son, Mitchell, who walked us through the sculpture garden on the roof of his father's old New York studio. I think people appreciate the humor, and I think they see more in it as time goes by. Mitchell, an actor and movie director, admits that he didn't always appreciate his father's work either. Kids talk about what their father did, and I thought, well, my father doesn't really have a job. <laughs> and it was weird to say artist because that wasn't really a job. But that also meant he was around more often than a lot of dads. There's always something really fun to do in the studio. Let me try a light blue on this. I don't think I've... Uh... Mitchell says his father, seen here in his Manhattan studio in 1992, worked every day, stopping for lunch promptly at one, and never suffered for his art. He didn't have um, demons that kept him from working like many artists. <laughs> he just loved what he did and felt very, you know, grateful to be able to do it. When Lichtenstein burst onto the New York scene back in the early 1960s, Tough guy abstract expressionists like Willem de Kooning and Jackson Pollock splattering their emotions all over the canvas were the rage. Lichtenstein replaced their heat with his cool. Those who had a negative reaction to his art, they, uh, their main argument was this is not art. Isabel Dervaux is the curator of an exhibit of Lichtenstein's early drawings, which originated at the Morgan Library in New York this fall and opened last Thursday in Vienna, Austria. She says that Lichtenstein, along with artists Robert Rauschenberg and Andy Warhol, turned images from popular culture into art. Its name, pop art. Throughout the art history, when an artist uh, brings something so radically new, um, some people don't see it. Well, taking a look at some of Lichtenstein's earliest work, you can see their point. A couch? A BB gun? Not traditional subjects for art. There's different levels of humor. There's the humor of just making a Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse, lifting it into another realm of art. Take this very simple drawing of a hand tracing the outline of a foot inspired by a diagram from a, um, a mail-order catalog for shoes. So it's a very practical kind of drawing. Uh, and nobody thinks of that as art. Exactly. 
Lichtenstein's work became more complex over the years, says his son, as he continued to question how we see the world. Like, for example, that is the nose. But it's just a parentheses and an apostrophe, or, you know, um, but we immediately accept it as a nose. Uh, but why? I mean, why, would, <laughs> why do we accept those two lines as a nose? While his art today is worth millions, you don't have to have a lot of money to appreciate it. There are Lichtensteins at the airport in Columbus, Ohio, in Miami, and beneath Times Square in the subway of New York. All you have to do is look up. It should be right up there. Yes. This mural right below 42nd Street was a gift from Roy Lichtenstein to the city's Arts for Transit program. Do you know how many times I've walked by this and have never really thought about it? You're always just trying not to bump into <laughs> people and you're trying to get to your destination. So like his father, says Mitchell Lichtenstein, to use clean, futuristic images to gently poke fun at the chaos of reality below. Mitchell, do you notice that whenever you talk about your father or your father's work, you just smile, you naturally mm -hmm. smile? Um, it, it makes me smile, I think it makes people smile. So Roy Lichtenstein was obviously very influenced by uh, comic books. He was influenced by uh, things that people could recognize. And so what you guys are going to be doing this week is we're going to be doing something that you should recognize because we are going to be doing Roy Lichtenstein inspired pop art self portraits. All right. So you guys are going to be drawing yourselves. So think about how you want to draw yourself. Think about how you want to represent yourself. Um, we're going to be moving locations here for tomorrow. So if you are, if you've been working in the same spot, we're going to have to change that up a little bit tomorrow, okay? I'll see you guys then. Bye.